Hey guys, how's it going? So this is going to be our first um, kind of uh, break down the song lesson, right? So this whole series is going to be based on teaching you songs, but not the note for note version, which you can find everywhere else on YouTube, but uh, basically how you would approach this song if you were playing in a cover band, uh, playing with your friends, uh, recording, so on and so forth. So what is the song structure? What are the chord changes? how you approach improvising, and any specific details. So um, I'm going to jump right into it, but don't forget to share this video and uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, so you can get all the content. Here we go. So this song is Wagon Wheel. It's by uh, Darius Rucker most recently, but also by Old Crow Medicine Show, and I believe it was actually written by Bob Dylan. If I'm wrong, drop it in the comments, but I'm almost positive about that. Um, this song is in the key of A, but your progression is it's an A, so that's a 1, to an E, that's your 5, F sharp minor, that's your 6, and D major, which is your 4. So it's really a 1, 5, 6, 4. And then the second time around, it skips the six and just goes one, five, four. So it's. I'll play it again. And that is literally the whole song. So you got verses and you have choruses, but it doesn't really change that much. Um, Tempo-wise, it's not that slow. Although, if you listen to a bunch of different versions, people play it at different speeds. But basically, what you want to do is try to hear the, you know, the melody in your head. You know? So when you go to the lead parts, right, uh, or when you're doing anything more than just the chords, and obviously this depends how many people you're playing with, but you really want to try to outline the triads because this is not a complicated song as far as you don't have seventh chords, um, anything crazy like that. It's just all triads. It's just major and minor triads. So the best thing to do or at least one really good thing to do is try to outline those changes with your triads. So, A major, E major, um, F sharp minor, D major. Now if you can do all those right here, right in your main spot, that's a great second part if you're playing with two guitar players. So you don't have both players going, you know, Right? You can have one person going. Now if you go up a position, maybe we could try it here, right? Now we're in fifth position. You could do your A major triad here. major like that, F sharp minor, D like that. So you could have someone again going. And you could be doing, you know,
know, I chose to go down to that other triad um, to illustrate that you have, you know, different options. Um, if you're unfamiliar with your triad shapes, there's a lesson, it's a long lesson on GuitarGate, which has all that stuff on it, which will totally be helpful to you. But this is a great way of, again, you know, the, these lessons are supposed to be um, helpful to you if you're playing in a band, you're playing with other people, so how to come up with different parts. So if you have the bass guy, you know, laying down the bass line, you have your main rhythm guitar player playing the big chords, and if you're another guitar player or a keyboard, right, you would kind of, you know, play a higher part that kind of outlines those changes, and you would do that with triads. Mm -hmm. Another example, if you want to take it up one step further, let's say we're up here around ninth position. You have your A major triad here, right? E major, F sharp minor, D major. And you can do the same thing. You can start here, start here, start here. And what that'll do is also give you the skeleton over which to improvise in this song. Now this song is obviously in the key of A major. So of course you could play over this whole song uh, playing simply A major or even A major pentatonic if you want to be, um, just have it be super duper simple. But if you really want to um, spell out those changes, and really add more texture to the song, you know, because if, if it's your time to take lead, um, you want to help out the rest of the band as much as you can. So anytime you can sell any part of those changes, you're really going to drive home uh, what makes the song cool, you know, because the people that wrote this song, you know, wanted those changes on purpose. They didn't write the song thinking, you know, this is something to be soloed over in A major pentatonic exclusively. They wrote the song as, yes, it's an E, then it's an F sharp, then it's a D. So you want to kind of outline that. And the best thing to do with that is, again, stay in one part of the neck at first. Let's say you're in this part, right? You have your A major pentatonic, your A major scale. Right? There's your, your major scale, your pentatonic, that, forgive me. Um, but then you also remember when you go over each chord, you want to visualize the chord tones and see if you can nab one, right? So if you use the example we we're using before. There's your A, and there's your E. Just that little part. If you're playing in your A major scale, you know, that note right there, part of this E major triad, that's a G sharp note. You could grab it here if you want. Really sells that change that you're going to E, right? So that is part. That's part of your A major scale, right? It's the seventh. So when you hit that seventh, you're really gonna sell that change to the five chord, you know? And so that's why I recommend I mean, that's just a stupid little ditty, but that's why I recommend that you start with the chords. Then you try to add some other higher texture part based on triads to give you that. To give you that skeleton that you can not only hear but visualize so that when you start using your whole major scale in this position, you can see the different chord tones as they change. You can see the shapes that change and therefore you can make melody lines, you can make leads that sound like the chords even though you're not playing them. Here's an example. So first time through, I'm just gonna play the chords. do 
try it. And now a little lead. So that was super simplistic, but the whole idea is when you're analyzing these songs and you're trying to figure out how to play through them, how to do it with the band, um, how to add something to the stage, you know, to the tune, you know, you got to have separate parts and each part should serve a specific purpose that um, elevates whatever the essence of that tune is. So for this tune, because it's so simple, you know, the changes are simple, they're just major and minor chords, there's nothing crazy going on. The best thing to do is, again, you know, you have your bass player, you know, doing their bass line, you know, keeping it super simple. You have your rhythm guitar player just playing your basic chords. And if you're a keyboard player, or if you have horns, or if you're the second guitar player, you don't want to step on that rhythm and just play those big chords somewhere else play it with some triads, right? Try to play your triads near each other so you don't lose that continuity. And then when it's your time to take a lead, try to craft a solo that's, you know, again, in this song in specific, you know, particular, it's the key of A major, but try to craft a solo that you're not just playing the scale, but you're also hitting those chord changes as well. So again, I hope that you find this video helpful. And if you subscribe, um, there'll be plenty more like it, and if you want any to see any different videos, any specific songs broken down about how you would approach playing them in a live scenario or with a band, drop them in the comments. You can always shoot me an email at, guitar, at support at guitargate.com. Good luck.